Welcome to Ignite Success with First Coast Women. I'm your host, Snowden McFall, professional speaker, author, and coach. Here you'll meet terrific women who kindle new ideas, spark change, and fire up our community. Today on our show, you're going to learn about two different women's events, one targeted to corporate executive women and another targeted to professional women and entrepreneurs. You're also going to learn about how concussions impact your health and how important it is for women to pay attention to concussions and head injuries. And I'm going to share with you the importance of your attitude and how it impacts every aspect of your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Ignite Success. Today on Fuel the Fire, we have a guest from Holland and Knight, Chris Schwing, and she's here to talk about not only what happens at her law firm, but the Jacksonville Women's Leadership Forum. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about your law practice, because I know you do class action suits, you do all sorts of things, you're traveling all over the country, very successful. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, I've been at Holland and Knight for about 15 years. Uh, I started as a uh, fresh out of school as a summer associate and uh, worked all the way up to equity partner. And, uh, and I love every minute of it, do uh, defending uh, companies primarily, a lot of litigation, corporate litigation, uh, class action defense, and it ranges from Florida, as you said, all around the country. So. I know you're always traveling, you're very busy, it makes it difficult for you and your beautiful daughter and family. Yes, quite a bit of travel recently <laughs> here. <laughs> so about eight years ago, you and a group of other women founded the Jacksonville Women's Leadership Forum. Why did you do that and what's it all about? That's right. So what we found is that there were not, while there were a lot of women's forums or women leadership conferences, there were not any that were really targeted for corporate executives and that we were having to travel out of state to go to those types of uh, leadership forums. And so we decided to have one here in, in Jacksonville uh, for the women of the First Coast. And so that's what uh, that's when it started, 2012. We became wow. an official nonprofit, and, uh, and it's been booming ever since. So I know you've got an upcoming conference, and it's when is it? Uh, our annual forum is in March. It's, this year it's March 27th and 28th. It's a two-day conference, uh, and it, it starts, our kickoff event is on the night of the 27th at, uh, at Mercedes, and, uh, and then our forum is on the 28th at the Schultz Center. And it's an all-day event. Uh, on the 28th, it's an all-day event. Starts at 7, uh, 7.30 with breakfast, and then we'll have a, our finish uh, post-party event uh, that Mayo Clinic is sponsoring, uh, and, and then that'll be the night. So. so the theme is Be Fearless, right? It is. And why did you pick that as the theme? Well, for a couple reasons. Uh, we decide what the pro programming is going to be for the next year based off of the input that we receive from surveys of guests that have attended from the prior year. And so we were seeing a lot of information, people wanting to hear more about how they could get more comfortable, more confidence, uh, take more risks, calculated risks. Uh, and so we came up with the Be Fearless theme for, for this year. Which is awesome, and I know innovation is also a part of that, right? It is. Innovation, inspiring, um, all of that is going to be part of influencing part of the theme as well. And you've got some terrific keynote speakers, I understand. Would you like to share with us who those are? I can. So uh, Libby Gill will be our morning keynote. Uh, as you as you know, she has been head of uh, Sony uh, Universal, um, and so she is, uh, I think, authored five books and is coming to talk about how to turn fear into fuel. Mm. We're very excited to have her. And then in the afternoon, we'll have Tammy Hearman as well, uh, who is a, a executive coach as well as speaks around the country on leadership advancement topics. And so she'll be talking about uh, how to fuel your uh, inner ally and really help break down some of those limitations that could be derailing your career moves. 
And then you have a series of breakout sessions too, right? We do. We have panels that uh, that we will pull from. We'll have a morning panel and an afternoon panel, and those will be with various uh, executives from around town. Men and female executives will uh, will be on those panels. I know. I think we've got some pictures that are going to show, and you'll see Darnell Smith, and you had a number of other executives locally from last year, right? Yes. Those are, we've had some. You can go on our website. It shows all of our uh, past and current speakers that are lined up uh, for this year, and uh, we we. Really really have some great uh, speakers that's we, we bring in national speakers but also our local speakers are just uh, have amazing stories and, um, and and just great tips for everyone so and Black Knight is one of your big corporate sponsors is that right Black Knight is our top sponsor this year they've uh, they've held that seat now a couple years in a row and so we're very thankful for them uh, but we have a lot of sponsors and we know that we couldn't bring the programming uh, to uh, to Jacksonville without the support of our corporate sponsors uh, and so Black Knight is one um, our other top sponsors are Mer- uh, Mercedes-Benz of Orange Park in Jacksonville as well as the Mayo Clinic and then there's a whole host of other sponsors that are on our website we actually just had one join us yesterday oh that's terrific so there's a lot of interest in this oh there is so I know that women out there, first of all, you're, it's corporate women. Who is your ideal target market of women to come to this event? So we really try to gear our programming toward mid to senior level women executives. Um, and this year we're actually trying to encourage more men uh, to come to the forum as well. We think that it's important to have men at the table uh, and get involved in these discussions. And so we've been uh, actually really encouraging men executives to uh, come to the forum as well. And we're seeing more of that happen over the over years so why men at a women's conference because you know men have plenty of male conferences well because if we're going to affect change um, we need to have everyone at the table talking about it Uh, it's it's not as powerful if we have a group of women that are talking about how things need to be changed as if we have everybody that's going to be involved in corporate America there uh, to get into the discussion Uh, yeah I couldn't agree more and I think the collaborative nature of things is very important so how can people register for the event what is your website so our website is uh, jwlf.org. jwlf.org. Right. Okay. Jacksonville Women's Leadership Forum. And, uh, and so you can go to the website. There is a link there to uh, purchase individual seats if you want to do that. Or there's also information there to, about becoming a corporate sponsor. And we've got sponsors at all different levels. We really don't want any company to feel that they can't send their executives to our forum. Thanks so much for being with us, Chris. I wish you great success. Thank you. Coming up next is our Success Sparks. In today's Blazing Trails segment, we have with us Nada, Dr. Nada Salvatore from Brooks Rehab. Nada is a physical therapist and a specialist and the director of the Brooks Concussion Center. Mm-hmm. And she is one, you're in the 1% uh, of physical therapists who have what certification? So I'm a fellow of the American Academy of Orthopedic Manual Physical Therapists, which is just about 1% of our profession has that kind of training. Which, is, which means she's very <laughs> established. So Nada, thank you for being with us. I understand that concussions are a much more serious issue than we have thought, and particularly relative to women and children. Can you speak to that? Yeah, so, you know, it's definitely a complex diagnosis. Um, Right now, we don't have anything to diagnose it objectively, so it's a diagnosis of subjective report. For women specifically, uh, is we call it the invisible population inside of this diagnosis. Mm. There's very little to no studies on the female brain mm. when it comes to the effects of concussion. And we do know that females and children are actually uh, more affected by concussions than, uh, than males. So, I, I mean, you know, most of us think, I think, about concussions. You, you have a fall, you hit your head. Um, you have a, a, an accident, that, mm-hmm. that, but what else contributes to concussions? So a lot of times we think about sports, right? So right. sports-related concussions are right. big ones, but it, really any impact to your body or your head, so it doesn't have to be directly to the head, that shakes the brain enough inside of the skull to cause a chemical imbalance mm. uh, can uh, then 
bring on symptoms of concussion. And what are those symptoms? So a lot of the common symptoms are things like headache, and dizziness, mm. um, balance issues, a lot of memory, fogginess, fatigue. Mm. So those are some of the more common ones, but the lists are fairly large. Um, and I know there's been a lot of controversy over the last several years about football players and how right. they have had severe brain damage and injuries from concussions. Yeah, so what we know now from, from the newer research is we, we, it's not conclusive that there's a, a straight connection in there. We know that even subconcussive blows or any kind of repetitive impact to your head or your body can at the end of the day cause some of these chronic issues that we see. So it's not a direct correlation at this time, um, but I think everybody could agree that several hits to your head is not good anyway. <laughs> we don't need not research. not a smart thing to we do, We don't need folks, research yes, for yeah, that. That's right. So how do, they, how do you treat that, and what do you do at Brooks uh, Rehab in your concussion center? Yeah, so we realized really early that this has to be a multidisciplinary approach to treating concussions. So we have a great team um, of several clinicians, from neuropsychologists to physical therapists, physicians, and all kinds of people that can get together and really address the individual symptoms. Because once you've seen one concussion, you've seen one concussion. Mm. They're not alike, it's very mm. different. Oh, that's um, interesting, yeah. they're unique. They're very unique, so huh. we need to be, the, the care needs to be very individualized. So we have a large group of clinicians that get together to formulate a plan of care to address that individual need. So you really have a team approach, then you all, Correct. it's a holistic approach. Absolutely. We do anything from a school reentry um, help to our students to return to sport protocols and return to work um, and addressing different symptoms, because everybody's different. So are brain scans part of that process? They're not. So mm -hmm. we know that imaging actually doesn't rule in uh, or rule out a concussion. So ah. having an MRI or a CT scan is not going to show anything because concussions are not a structural damage to the brain. They're actually a chemical imbalance. So they don't ah. show on your typical imaging. A brain bleed, which is something more serious, will show up on that, but not a concussion. So. Uh, if it's a chemical imbalance, do you then promote certain physical in activity to change the chemicals in the body? We do. That's great. So we talk about the concept of rest, right? Mm -hmm. The brain rest is important for that 24 to 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And then we actually encourage people to start going through their daily lives again and slowly reintroduce, reintroduce exercise to their life and activity mm -hmm. because they do. we do know that from research that people that become active in that short period of time actually recover a lot better. So it rests the first couple of days and then get active again. Correct. And don't try and diagnose yourself. Absolutely. There's <laughs> people out there to help you with that. Yeah. And so um, in addition to that, you were talking chemically, are vitamins and supplements part of the therapy as well? Is that part of the chemical imbalance so, addressing? Yeah, there's a lot of debate still out there on mm -hmm. what is, can be helpful to um, help to, you know, reestablish that balance in the brain. But so there's nothing out there that is conclusive that can help. Mm -hmm. um, I think more of a re slowly reintroduction to your daily life and making sure that you are monitoring your symptoms and really having a team around you is, is your best bet. And so what is the best way that someone could find out more about the Brooks Concussion Center? Yeah, on our website, so www.brooksrehab.org, okay. um, we have a, a specific location in there that talks about concussion, and they can um, definitely read some more about our program and our phone number and fax numbers are in there too. And I know we have some photos of some physical therapy, and, some, and so you'll be seeing those on our screen. Well, thank you, Nada, so much for being with us today. We appreciate all that you do, and uh, keeping your brain healthy is really important, taking care of your children and your own self when you have a concussion. So thanks so much for being with us, and uh, coming up next, we have more information for you on other women's conferences.
our Success Sparks segment today, we have two dynamic women here with me, April Caldwell and Kim Bynan. And they're here to talk about the Women's Expo. And first, I want to find out a little bit more about each of you. So, April, I know that you were you call yourself a former finan a, re a reformed financial investor, but you yes. teach women about money. Is that right? It is. Yes. Yeah. So, I'm a, a reformed financial advisor, <laughs> and now what I do is teach women how to get the money that they want in order to live the retirement and the lifestyle that they want. Right, because that's a big area women don't pay enough attention to. Right. We, we're, we're so busy, right? We do so many things. And the women I work with, are they're, they're brilliant, smart, accomplished, and they do not want to come home and deal with their money. Right. So that's where I come in. I, I think, you know, traditionally women have not been taught to be good financial managers, right? Correct. So it's an issue. And Kim, I know you stop the bleeding when companies are in crisis. Is that right? That's correct. Um, kind of like your crash cart surgeon in the ER. So if you've got a team or a business that is a little dysfunctional or having issues, I like to jump up on the table and stick my hand in the right order, stop the bleeding, get them stabilized, and then send them on to recovery. And so do you work when companies have a media crisis or some big um, you know, problem that's occurred that would create a lot of sensationalism too? Are you involved in that as well? That, I like to leave that more to the, the branding, marketing, and, and PR, and media folks. I am more on the business strategy side, so okay. it's more of, of that kind of lane for me. Okay, terrific. And you're here because you have a wonderful event coming up very soon, right? On yes. March 16th. Yes. The Women's Expo. So this is a brand new event. Is that right? It is. It's kind of um, an extension of what you know I've been doing the last eight years. Kim has spoken at some of the events I've done, and we decided we wanted to take it to the next level. Next level. So talk about this event. What is it about? All about women. Okay. So all about women in business and ways that they can increase their sales, their visibility, their exposure. We are super excited. This is our inaugural event, our first ever event. And so we both have spoken at different events in the past. And we were at an event that April was speaking at in South Florida. And we decided that we could do it better. And we wanted to bring it to Jacksonville, right? Because we know how wonderful Jacksonville is for women in business. And our keynote speaker is actually Karen Bowling. Terrific. She is UNF's director for entrepreneurship and innovation downtown. So we are bringing together all of Jacksonville's most influential, powerful women to pour into our um, all of our women here in Jacksonville, small business owners, entrepreneurs, really every kind of woman. And it's everything from mindset to marketing to money, of, okay. course. of course. And we invite all women March 16th to UNF to come get poured into. We're going to have a lot of fun. So who's the ideal person you'd like to go to this event, April? Um, this would be a woman who um, is a business owner or is a corporate executive or a side hustler that knows that they need to ramp up their business. They're ready to take it to the next level and they want to connect with the women that can help them do that. Great. Okay, terrific. So, and this is going to be where? It's at UNF. At the University Center there? Um, Herbert. Herbert Center. Yes. Yes. Okay, terrific. And and uh, what are the times on this event? So, this is a day-long event. Okay. So, this is 9 to 5 if you stay for the VIP hour. We are going to have 24 speakers in four different breakout sessions. So. The hardest choice besides picking what your lunch will be, will be which speaker to go and see each hour. And what's the VIP hour? Ooh, so. <laughs> she went, That's ooh. our favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> is that cocktails after the event? It is. You know it. <laughs> now, here's a little secret. We start with cocktails. Oh, um, in the morning? Mimosas. Mimosas. Oh, okay. How do you get anything done all day? Oh. I can't speak when I've had alcohol in the morning. There's no way. <laughs> I do. She's not allowed to start till VIP hour. Oh, uh, okay. Um, okay. But yeah, so VIP hour is a chance where all of our speakers come. The VIP guests will get to mingle, talk, chat with the speakers that maybe they saw and loved or that they didn't get to see speak, cocktails. And then we also have um, live music from a local artist here. Oh, that's terrific. Yes. So how can women register for this event? So the best way is to go to the website, uh, womensmoneycoach.com slash women's hyphen expo. Okay, let's try that again. Yes. Womensmoneycoach.com yes. 
slash woman's dash expo. Okay. It's also very easy to find on Eventbrite. You can okay. just type in blazing your trail women's expo. Okay. So it's easy to find if you're looking for, you know, you can go into search events and find and look up Women's Expo Blazing Your Trail. It'll pop right up and you can get your ticket there. We are also all over Facebook and Instagram. So if you'll type in Blazing Your Trail Women's Expo there, you'll find it as well. We have had a great time posting live Facebook videos and Instagram videos um, showcasing all of the speakers and the speakers are also promoting the event. So you shouldn't have any trouble if you're anywhere on social media uh, finding uh, the speakers and finding us and getting more information about how to get a ticket. Well, thank you so much for being with us. I wish you every success with this, and this is a great way for you to blaze trails yourself. In today's Keep Your Fire Burning segment, I want to talk to you about attitude. Your attitude has everything to do with your health, wellness, success, and prosperity. And unfortunately, in today's world, attitude is a problem. There's so much negativity out there. All you have to do is turn on the news to know that. And people have a tendency to complain and whine and talk about how bad things are. And all that does is make everybody else upset. Your attitude is so critical. Dr. Daniel Amen has said, and he's a brain specialist, written many, many books, he has said that attitude has everything to do with your healing and your capability of recovering from disease and illness. So let's talk about attitude. The correct attitude is the attitude of optimism. And many people don't realize how significant that is. Doctors who are put into a positive state before they start their day have three times more intelligence in their actual day and they diagnose 19% faster. For me, if I'm going to see a doctor, I want my doctor to be in that positive frame of mind and be able to diagnose more effectively. How about you? Optimism is one of the qualities that people often overlook and I know I've been a lifelong optimist and have sometimes been accused of being a Pollyanna. But let me tell you, there's great science behind optimism. First of all, Yale University did a study of 600 people and they found that optimists live seven and a half years longer than pessimists. That's almost a whole decade. So you increase your longevity and you have a longer life if you're an optimist. Harvard University did a study and found that optimists actually have better lung function. Think about that. Optimists literally breathe easier. And optimism is a learned skill set. It's only 25% inherited. So even if you had very negative parents, you can still train yourself to be an optimist. The National Institute of Health found that pessimists have a much greater chance of disease. 23% of the women that they interviewed for this study ended up dying early because they were pessimists. And pessimists have a 25% greater chance of contracting heart disease. So there's a great deal of evidence to support the value of optimism. So how do you overcome the negative self-talk, the negativity of today's world, the things you see on, self, on social media, and become more positive and gain a more positive, optimistic outlook. Well, one of the things you want to do is really consider who you surround yourself with. They say that we are the product of the top five people that you spend the most time with. So what are those people like? Are they complainers or are they cheerleaders? Are they people who look at the bright side of things? Or are they people who are always looking for the bad news, the Eeyores of the world? You want to avoid the Eeyores as much as possible. I call it the ain't it awful club at the cafeteria in the office. Those are the people who no matter how bad your problem is, they've got it worse and they're going to tell you that. Stay away from those people. If you're married to somebody like that, try and shift them. And one of the ways you can do that is ask them when they start to go into their litany of problems, say, well, what's the good news? 
My husband and I have a practice at the end of each day when we come in, if one or the other of us is complaining, we say, well, what good things happened today? And we immediately focus back on the positive. It's an important habit to get into. Other ways that you can focus on more positivity and be more optimistic are to be kind and gentle to yourself. Women in particular are very judgmental and we're hard on ourselves. We expect ourselves to be perfect. And you know what? There are no perfect people out there. We do the best we can with what we have. So be kind to yourself. Praise yourself and be kind and praise other people. Be a cheerleader and a champion for other people. Other ways that you can use to make yourself more positive are to look for inspiration. Michael J. Fox is somebody that inspires me and he's done an amazing job dealing with his Parkinson's. And I read an interview where he was talking about his children and how he handles their complaining. He read a story about a woman in Mozambique and there was a big flood in Mozambique and the woman had to actually climb a tree and she was nine months pregnant and she gave birth in the tree. So whenever his kids complain, he says, look, a lady had a baby in a tree. How bad can your life be? Look and read inspirational stories. Look up and find biographies. Watch uplifting movies. Spend time around positive people. Make a list of daily successes that you've had and make a list of the things that you're grateful for. Grateful people are much more optimistic. You manifest what you focus on most. If you're continually focusing on bad news and what you see on social media that brings you down, you're going to create more of that. But if you focus on good news and focus on the good things that are happening and really be impeccable about what you allow into your consciousness from what you watch and what you read and who you connect with, you can have a much more positive outlook and that's going to keep your fire burning. This has been Ignite Success with the Jacksonville Buzz. This show is for women and about women. And today I hope you've learned a great deal about women's conferences that are coming up that you can be a part of. Chris Schwing from Holland and Knight, who is a wonderful attorney, has shared with you about how the Jacksonville Women's Leadership Forum got started. And you want to be part of that event on March 27th and March 28th. You've also heard from Nada Salvatore, and she shared with you about concussions and how they impact your brain and how as a woman and a mother, you want to pay special attention to that. April Caldwell and Kim Bynan shared with you about the Women's Expo that's coming up on March 16th. And you can find out more about all of these women at the JacksonvilleBuzz.com website. I shared with you some tips and tools about optimism and how important it is to be optimistic and what an impact that makes in your life. We'd love to hear from you. I hope you'll take these tips and tools and apply them to your life and ignite your success.